<clears throat> okay. First time I do that, so I got my my Super Nikon. Um, anyway, that should be uh, really nice. So that's um, should give us uh, a pretty high uh, quality. Okay, so this is for our ADC DAC activity. Uh, so obviously, I don't have a ruler. Oh, perfect. Okay, ruler. Okay, so so you need to print one of uh, two of each. Oh shoot, I forgot. <laughs> uh, let's just print one of each. You need to print two of each of the three papers. So you want two of each, basically, if that makes sense. So it's paper one, two, and four that you want two copies each, okay? So your paper one, right? So your paper one, so that's paper one, the really uh, thin grid, that's paper two. That's paper four. Obviously out of paper. That's the best time. Are you kidding me? So I got my paper one. Okay, so I got paper one, two, four. Okay, so I got two of each. So you see what I got? Right? Paper one, two, four, paper one, two, four. Okay. Um, so your second set is for redoing. Okay, so let's try to do this quick. Okay, so for um, so you start, you draw a line roughly in the middle. It doesn't need to be perfectly, just align it on one of your uh, line, right? Okay, this is your time. And this line here, it's probably a good idea to draw that one out. Okay, this is going to be your Y, and this is at X zero here. So this here is your zero, zero. Okay, zero, zero. Good enough. All right. So what I want you to do, it's very simple. You're just going to draw a, a quick wave at the top, at the, on the first half here, a really quick one, right? So right up, right down, right? So if I go on the back, right? Like they have to look something like this, a quick wave on, on the left. And then here, you're going to make a really slow one. So you can go just on one side, actually, right, to, to, to give us the space, right? So for this one, you can go even a, a, a bit tighter, right? So this is what I want, okay? So I start, doesn't matter where I start, right? So just a quick up, down, you don't need to go super quick. Something that will look something like this. <clears throat> oh, and I just realized you have to respect the property of functions where they don't cross over. So I need to need to redo that. So let me try. Let me try on this one instead. Okay, so that's what you don't want to do. I kind of go over, right? So that's not going to work too well. Let's restart. Line in the middle. That's my X. That's my time. And this line here. So that's my Y. Uh, actually, you may want to do that on each of your. Uh, could do it on the six, to be honest. Right? So you're going to do it on 
this one as well in the middle. This is my time. And the same here. Both in the middle, it doesn't matter as long as it's close to the middle. Okay, so this is my time. Right? Okay. It's the same draw you. Y. So this is my zero zero. This is my zero zero. Here. Zero zero. Okay, got that. Is enough. Okay, so we're back on graph one, and then we've got two and four. Okay, so now let's try to not overlap. Over my X's, right? So basically, I want new X's to be. Um, so actually, why don't I start at zero zero? That might be a smarter thing to do, right? Since we have zero zero. Okay, so go up, continue basically going, but you try to make it as tight as you can, right? So that's my challenge right here. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so something like this. Okay, you, you try to do better than me, right? Is it enough? And here, um, actually you could start from where it stopped, and then, um, um, you could just go up, like, kinda, just like a sort of a random wave. There's a lot of options here. Uh, it's because I want a, a, a very slow signal. Okay? That's what I want, right? So I could do something just like that. Okay. Does it need to be exactly this way? Now your challenge is to try to repeat. It's not about getting it perfect. It's about getting it roughly. Okay. So so roughly, maybe use your fingers, right? So this is where it should come back. You see my point, right? So you go. And right, so I'll have it go here, right? So see here, I want it to curve in. Can't do that, right? Because you're breaking one of the key properties of functions. Um, and then, right, you just redraw roughly the same, right? So a nice wave up, doesn't matter. And then you do the same on the third, right? So roughly here. Right, so we'll go actually here. And then same thing, you do a nice, okay? So, okay, that's actually pretty neat, okay? So that's roughly what I want to see. Okay, we're not done, we're just starting. Okay, so I got my three. Now you don't do it on the, on the copy of, on the second sheet of each of those papers, okay? Now your challenge, okay, so this is the part, especially on the first one, it'll be, uh, it'll be slow. We can't really help here, okay? So we're going to have to do it that way. Um, what I need you to do, that might be a bit extra on this one, because that's really, uh, maybe do every two, but then we're back to this one. The idea is to, every X, every X, you're going to identify it's actually a bit faster than I envisioned. Okay, so if you look, not sure how focused I am here. I'm trying my best here, I'm just using my eye. Right, so if you see here on every X, I'm identifying the crossing point. And you're just trying to approximate it, right? Okay, so it's actually not as crazy as I thought. Okay, so you go to the next one. So this one goes really far. Okay, so see here, I have a mistake. I'm actually going in a bit. So just clean it up. Right, it's okay to cheat here. It's not about, right? So this I can do, maybe, right? 
Okay. And then you just keep going. Okay, so there's one here. One here. Here. Okay, so this one's going to be tedious. Right? Because that's a lot of points. Okay, so so here's the challenge is you can't make a dot in between squares. You have to be at um, at coordinates positions. And so you pick the closest one, okay? You approximate where the where the waveform hits it. Right? So you see here, right? I went up cuz cuz otherwise I'm right? Right here, you see I went up, right? To touch my line here, this line here. Right? So you keep going, you do it all. Now for the tedious, the really tedious part, the tedious part will be to label, uh, you may want to do this one at the top here. What I want you guys to do, you just, well, you, you just, so at the top here, you put in a string, in a sequence, the, the coordinates of every point, one after the other. So you start, so you go, and you do it small, and especially for this one, you'll have to do it really small. So you go zero, zero, because that's here. My second one is, now this is where it gets tedious, so you, you, you'll need to make a scale for yourself, okay? Um, so you count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I would probably label, right? And then you could just take this and, and, and copy, this is, so this is going to be roughly 20, right? This is going to be roughly 30, right? Okay, so so on so forth. This is going to be around 40, okay? Yeah. Like, guys, it's okay to estimate some of the numbers as long as, like, the goal is not to take forever. The goal is to try to find a quick way to get this done, but do it as best as you can. Right, so my second point goes really far, so I'm at like 20, uh, so I'm at 1x, but 29y, right, so you see that? Okay, so I keep going, so I go to my second point, so that's now 2, so you see my x increases by 1, and then I look what happens to my, to my y's, so this is like 33, so keep going, so I'm at 3 now, so 3, 39, Four, so the X's are easy because they're just linear, right? So four, that's a 42. Now notice my next one is also 42 here, right? So five, 42, right? You go down the wave, you're going to land on a string of coordinates. Now this one's going to be tedious, okay? Just take your time, okay? So it's just it's just a bit boring, okay? So so here I want for this one it might be uh, I either do it really tiny, right? So coordinates really small, right? And then a full list of that. Okay, so so graph one, paper one, is the one that will take you longer. Of course, because there's more dots. The grids are finer. This here, I can give it away. It's it's not like I'm, it's not like it's a secret. This is a higher resolution. That's how you would, that's how you would call that. So that'll be your higher resolution. And obviously, you can guess on four. So you do the same idea next on graph two, okay? So you identify each. Point and you got to jump to one of the squares, the closest. So you just, you you just estimate it, right? So that's about here. Now this one, on, so we'll go here. This one looks to be here. Do you see what I'm doing, right? And you keep going here. Now this is going to go much faster, right? You might have just about what is that? That's about 30 set of coordinates. This one's going to be a piece of cake, right? Right, one, this one, uh, this one, 
this one. See what I'm doing? Right? Now, for two, you go here. For three, prep for this one. You see that here? Ah, that's actually really nice here. That's really nice. It really shows the problem when you go for a lower resolution. It really highlights it. And then, and then we jump here. That's about here. Whoa, what just happened? Why did I lose that? It's my first time. There's a time on this? Okay, I'll have to play with it. And then here you do the same. Set of coordinates here, and then for section B underneath here. And now, for the fun part, now what you're going to do is we'll forget this here. On your second copy of each of those papers, I want you using only the set of coordinates that are stringed. Now you redraw the waveform just using this. So obviously the on paper one it'll be tedious. Take your time, okay? Um, and then on, on paper two will be faster, <clears throat> much faster, and then four will be super fast. And you should notice, you should notice something, okay? So this activity is to highlight what happens when we have a signal go through an analog, I should say, when we have an analog signal go through analog signal go through an ADC, getting digital, so digitized, and then that info, so this part, that's what happens on your first paper, that's the ADC, and what happens on your second sheet, when now you'll take the set of coordinates and redraw using the set of coordinates, now this is the DAC this is what the DAC does. So it takes the binary information, which is can quantized, it's called. That's that's literally what it's called, quantization. And um, so it's discrete information, right? So those are, are bits. And then the goal of the activity is to show you what happens when our resolution is high and when our resolution is low. So this is high resolution this one this is high resolution so paper one and paper four that'll be your worst resolution and uh, I'm trying to make you think about the consequences for electronics right so more on this in class